Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. This video is going to be a part two to the data store video where we take a look at how to store multiple values. So right now I have two values set up. I have a money and an experience. So let's go ahead and collect some values for those and then we'll leave the game and I can show you how they both save. So over here this one is for the experience. Nothing too fancy. Just touch a part to get experience. And then over here this one is for the money with the same process. Touch the part and get some money. Okay, just to make it a little easier to remember, I'm going to get 15 for each one. Okay, so leaving the game, I'm going to have 15 money and 15 experience. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the game and then rejoin. Okay, so now I'm going to rejoin the game. All right, and now that I'm back in the game, I see that both values have been saved. I have 15 money and 15 experience, just like I had before. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be writing a script in the server script service. There's also some scripts for the parts here, which I'll go over toward the end, but they're not really important for this video because likely you're going to have other ways for players to earn stats. But let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the script that should be in server script service. The script is going to be a little bit longer, but hopefully it's not going to be too bad to understand. It's not that much different than the script we wrote before for a single value. There's just one extra function that'll store everything else for us. All right, so we're going to start at the top by defining a variable for the data store service and also for player data. So let's go ahead and start. So it's going to be local and then data store service. So this is just a variable name, so feel free to shorten it if you want to. Just remember, anytime we use that variable in the script later on, you'd have to change that part as well. Okay, this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put data store service. Next, we're going to create a variable for player data. So we're going to say local player data. And this is going to be equal to data store service. And then we're going to say colon get data store. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put player data. Next, we're going to create a function that will set up a basic leader stats. So we'll say local function. The name of this function can be on player join. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put player. So this will be the player that joins. Next, we're going to say local leader stats. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. We're going to be creating a folder. After that, we're going to say leader stats dot name. And this is going to be equal to leader stats. And then we're going to store this with the player by saying leader stats dot parent is equal to player. Okay, after that, we're going to define our two values. So I'm going to be using money and experience, but you can use whatever you want to. So I'm going to start by saying local money. It's going to be equal to instance dot new. This is going to be an int value. We're going to say money dot name. And this is just going to be equal to money. And then money dot parent is going to be equal to leader stats. Okay, we're going to define the experience one in a very similar way. So we'll do local and we'll shorten it up a little bit. We'll just say exp is going to be equal to instance dot new. Here we're also creating an int value. We're going to say exp dot name. And this is going to be equal to experience. And the reason I'm spelling this part out is because this part is what's going to show up in the leader stats. Okay, next we're going to say experience.parent. And just like before, we're going to store this inside the folder. To run this function whenever a player joins the game, we're going to connect this with the player added event. To do that, we're going to say game.players.playerAdded, colon connect, and then the name of our function is onPlayerJoin. We're going to be adding more to this, but let's just go and pause here and make sure this part is working. Okay, so we're good to go. We have our leader stats with money and experience. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so we're going to be adding another section to this function here that's going to retrieve the data. But I think it makes more sense to start with how we're going to save the data, and then we can take a look at how to bring it up. To save the data, we're going to create a function. And what this function is going to do, it's going to create a table of all the stats that we want to keep track of. And then what we're going to do later on is once the player leaves the game, we're going to store that table with all the different stats inside of it. So this is the part that's different from the last video, and this is how we're going to save multiple values. Let's go ahead and start on that function. So we're going to say local function. The name of this function is going to be create underscore table. 
we're going to pass the parameter player, and we're going to pass this value to this function whenever the player leaves the game. What we're going to do inside this function is create an empty table. So we're going to say local player underscore stats, and this is going to be equal to an empty table. And then what we want to do with this empty table is fill it with the two different values that we're keeping track of, which is going to be the money and also the experience. So to do that, we can loop through the leader stats folder to get all the different values that we're keeping track of, and then we can store it inside of this table here. All right, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to say for underscore comma, and then we have to give the other value a name, so we're going to just call it stat. And then we're going to say in pairs. And then what we're going to be pulling from is going to be player dot leader stats. So this is the folder that contains these two values here. And then from the leader stats, we're going to say colon get children. And then we're going to put parentheses. Okay, so this is going to take a look at our leader stats folder and pull all the different values inside of it. And then what we're going to do with those different values is we're going to add them into our table right here. And we're going to add them to the table by starting with player stats. To create a new entry into this table, we're going to start with that entry's name. And we're going to get that from stat.name. So as it goes through, it's going to start with money. So money would be stat, and then money.name would be equal to the string money. When it gets to this section, then stat is going to be equal to our experience value. And then when we say stat.name, it's going to be experience. Okay, so that's going to create those two different entries. And then the value that's going to be associated with those different entries is going to be equal to stat.value. Okay, after we do that and we fill this table with all the different stats that we're keeping track of, we're going to say return. And then what we're going to be returning is our table. So we're going to say player underscore stats. So the reason we're doing that is going to make more sense in just a second. Because what we're going to do is make another function when the player leaves the game. We're going to call this function here. So once the player leaves the game, it's going to run this function. And then we're going to get this player stats table, and that's what we're going to save. All right, so that was a lot, but let's just go and start working on it. So the function that we're going to work on is going to be when the player leaves the game. We're going to start by saying local function. The name of this function can be on player exit. Okay, and let's make sure I spell function correctly. Okay, inside the parentheses, we're going to pass player. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is say local player stats. And this is going to be equal to our function. So we're going to say create underscore table. We're going to give this function our player. And what this is going to do, it's going to run the function up here. So it's going to do all this stuff here. And then when we say return player stats, it's going to store player stats inside of this variable here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is save that table to the data store. And we're going to start that off by saying local success. And then we're going to do a comma and then say ERR. So this is going to be short for error. And this is going to be equal to pcall. Inside the parentheses, we're going to say function. And then do another set of parentheses. While your mouse is in between the last two parentheses, press enter a few times to drop down. Inside this function, we're going to say local, and then player, user, ID, and this is going to be equal to the string player, underscore, and then we want to join the player's user ID to this, so we're going to do dot dot, and then we're going to say player, dot user ID. The user ID for the player is a unique number given to the player so that even if they change their name, we can still look them up by this unique number. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to start by saying player data. And then we're going to say colon set async. So set async is how we're going to store data onto the Roblox data store. And then inside here, what we need to give it is the player's user ID, which we stored under player user ID. And then the other part is going to be the data that we want to connect with the player's user ID. And that's going to be the table of all the different stats. So we store that information inside player underscore stats. Okay, so the next part we're going to do is not strictly necessary, but it's going to help us see if our data is storing correctly. So we're going to say if not success, then what we're going to do is we're going to warn, which is similar to a print statement. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to say could not save data. 
Okay, so by putting this function inside of a pcall, this is how we do error handling. So if something goes wrong, it's not going to break the script. But what it's going to do, it's going to make success equal to false. And then if that happens, then it's going to give us this warning message that it couldn't save the data. This is not going to fix anything. It's just helpful to see if something is going wrong. Okay, so now that we have everything saved, let's go and work on retrieving the data when the player joins the game. So back up here for the onJoin function, what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting the player's user ID. So we're going to say local player user ID, just like we did below. And this is going to be equal to the same thing, so I'm just going to copy and paste. And then we're going to define a variable called data. So we're going to say local data. And this is going to be equal to player data. And then from this, we're going to say get async. So similar to set async, get async is going to pull data from the Roblox server. And what we're going to be looking for on the Roblox server is the player's user ID. So whatever data that's associated with this user ID is going to get stored in this variable called data. Since we're storing a table with the player's user ID, then data is going to be a table as well. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if data exists for this player user ID. And we can do that by saying if data, then. So this would mean that when it searched for the user's ID, it was able to find some information associated with it. So what we want to do if we have information is we want to set our money and our experience equal to whatever is saved inside that table. So we're going to start by saying money dot value. And as far as what this is going to be equal to, it's going to be a little bit different than last time. So we're going to start with data. So this is a table. And what we're going to be looking for inside this table is the value that comes with money. So what we're going to be searching for is money. And then what that's going to do, it's going to give you whatever number value is associated with money. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for the experience. So we're going to say exp.value. And this is going to be equal to data. This time we're going to be looking for our experience. And then whatever value is associated with that, it's going to store it as the value for experience. Okay, so that covers the case if the player has data. If we have a new player and they don't have any data stored yet, then we need to cover that case as well. So that's going to be else. And then in this case, what we're going to do is just set money and experience equal to zero. So money dot value is going to be equal to zero. And then experience dot value is also going to be equal to zero. Okay, and that should be it. And I noticed down below that I forgot to do the player removing event. So it's going to be very similar to the above one. So we're going to say game dot players dot player removing. And then we want to connect this to our other function, which is on player exit. Okay, so I know this was quite a bit, but hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of how this works. Basically what's going on is when the player first joins the game, it's going to create a leader stat for that player. And then as far as the values for those leader stats, it's going to check to see if there's already data for that player. If there is data, then it's just going to set it to the old values. If this is a new player, then it's going to set those both equal to zero. And then down below, when the player leaves the game, it's going to create a table with all the different stats that we're keeping track of. And then it's going to store that along with the player's user ID. And then when they join the game again, it'll run into this section right here. And then it'll set the values for the leader stats equal to the old values. Okay, there's a few things we need to do before we test this out. So make sure you go to File, and then Publish to Roblox. After you're published, then you want to go to the Home tab, and then Game Settings. And then under the Security tab, you want to enable this section right here, which is the API services. If you don't turn this on, then your script can't communicate with the Roblox servers. So make sure you first publish your game, and then go under Game Settings, and enable this section right here. As far as testing goes, I would not recommend testing in Studio, because a lot of times it's not going to work. So after you publish your game, go over to Roblox website, and then test it from there. Okay, so this is my game on the Roblox website, so let's go and try it out and make sure it's still working. Okay, so we have the old values from before. You may notice that for experience, it's one more than we had before. I accidentally touched a part before I started talking. But let's go and collect a little bit more money and experience. We'll leave the game and then rejoin. So for each one, I'm going to get it up to 20. Okay, so they're both at 20, so I'm going to leave the game now. And then we'll rejoin.
And we can see once I rejoin the game, I have 20 for the money and also 20 for the experience. Just to show you how easy it is to add more stats, let's go back to the script. We'll add another stat and then we'll come back here. Okay, so we're back on the script now. So we're just going to create another random stat. Let's do local and then we'll call this one level. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. Here we're going to create another int value. Next, we're going to say level dot name. And this is going to be equal to level. And then we'll store this in the leader stats folder by saying level dot parent. And this is going to be equal to leader stats. Okay, so down below here, we're just going to add another section for the level. So we'll say level dot value is going to be equal to data. And then this time we're going to be looking for level. And then down here, if we don't have any data, then we're going to say level dot value is going to be equal to zero. And that's all we have to do. We don't have to do anything with this function here or the one down below. Now on the workspace, I'm just going to make another copy of this. We'll just rename this one to level. And then we'll just make a few changes to the script. So for the script here, basically all it's doing is whenever the player touches the part, it's going to add one to the leader stat. So I'm just going to change this variable to level. And then we'll change this one to level since we want to change that part. And then down here from experience to level. All right, let's go ahead and publish the game. I'm just going to do it a few times just to make sure it went through. Okay, and after that, we're going to head back to Roblox and test it out. Okay, so we're in the game. We have 20 for our money, 20 for our experience, and then zero for the level so far. So let's collect a few more of each. So I'm going to go to 25 for the money and the experience, and then I'm going to go to 5 for the level. Okay, so now let's go ahead and leave the game. And we'll rejoin. And now we have 25 for the money, 25 for the experience, and 5 for the level. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Please make sure that before you test this out, you publish your game, and also turn on API services in the game settings. And then as far as testing goes, make sure you test it on Roblox website and not through Studio. The script that I wrote in this video is going to be linked in the description so that you can copy and paste it, and then just make the changes that you need to make. If you have any questions on it or are having issues with it, let me know in the comments. For now though, I hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for the next one.